you guys. Thanks. It was, it was a bit of a rough morning, rough start. But you know what? That was seamless. They didn't even stop. I was impressed with that. They just kept going. The, all the sound guys got back onto it and you wouldn't have known if you hadn't been here and seen it. <laughs> so well done, guys. Thank you. Give them another hand. That was awesome. It's never easy when things go wrong and the electrician was on stage leading us, so that's not great, but <laughs> they worked it out, so that's awesome. So do we have anyone visiting with us for the first time? Down the back, I hear. <laughs> yes, over here. Give them a big hand. I thought I saw someone else, but maybe I'm wrong. Okay, welcome, welcome, welcome. We love having visitors here with us. We will take a moment soon to greet you more, but welcome. We always have a lot of visitors this time of year, so Christmas Eve service next week, make sure you invite people to that. It's always a good time to get that family that's a bit hesitant about church. They'll come at Christmas time, so start inviting now. Uh, so I just got a few announcements. So gift wrapping will be on the 19th of December, which I believe is Tuesday. Is that? Yep, Tuesday at 9.30. So if you want to wrap some gifts, and we've got a lot of them, that is just like the tip of the iceberg. They're all in the offices over there. There is piles and piles of gifts. So if you just leave it up to a few of us, we aren't going to be happy. So if you are a good gift wrapper, please, or even if you're not, because I have to come every year and I'm a terrible gift wrapper. So if you are, come along. It's actually a lot of fun, even though I winch about it every year. It's a, lot, it's a lot of fun. We all just come together and wrap gifts and chat. So come here Tuesday at 9.30. And then the awesome part, which I never get to be involved in, is the gift delivery. So we do all the hard work and then you get to deliver, which is awesome. So if you're able to be a part of that on the 20th of December, if you'd like to get involved, make sure you see Lisa and Elton here. So it's 9 8 Oh, it says here to see Lisa and Elton, but it's 9 a.m. here at the church on Wednesday. So that means you get to come here, collect all the gifts and give it to families. And it's really special. I always love seeing all the photos from that day of these people that weren't expecting a gift or weren't going to get a gift. And then they see what uh, this church has put together for them. And it's always so awesome. So if you'd like to be a part of that, you are more than welcome. Uh, and we've got... Christmas Eve service and lunch. So, so special this year. Sunday is Christmas Eve, so we're going to have a service and it'll be a special Christmas Eve service. And then afterwards, we're going to have a potluck lunch so you can bring something and be a part of that. That's awesome. As I said before, it's also a really good time to bring your family. They get a lunch as well and they get to hear a bit about the Christmas story, which is awesome. And then New Year's Eve is also on a Sunday this year. So the New Year's Eve, all in service and lunch. So it's going to be a family service. We'll have the kids in here. I believe we've got uh, Nathan Urisic up here speaking a little message um, for, the, for everyone to be involved in. So that's awesome. So make sure you come along to that. It's just a normal time, 10 a.m., all in service. Fantastic. And lunch. I said that. And lunch. Did I say that? If I didn't say that, there's a lunch as well. So you guys get lunch two weeks in a row. I mean, we'll be off cruising, but you guys will have such a great time. So we just have, we've got Mike, Pastor Michael back here from Africa, which is awesome. So we've got a video to watch and then he's going to chat to us a little bit about that. Thanks, guys. Hey, Pastor Lisa, Pastor Elton, and all the C3 Church Langford, just want to say a huge thank you to all of you from Hope Sunday, because this is what's happening because of your support at Hope Sunday. So many bags of million are going out. It's just one of our 120 families that is happening right now. You can hear all the noise in the background. I'm speaking as I normally do, but God bless you all. Can't wait to see you all. Chrissy, Benji, see you soon. So big thank you, God bless from Abby Mary as well. See you all soon. Well, good to be back. Hello to our pastors and our church family. I must admit, the moment I came here this morning, I thought, is this my church? 
cushions on the chairs, couches. Over. It's all happening. It's a beautiful church. And then what was great, the power went off. And I went, this is Zambia. I'm back, <laughs> I'm back home. So thanks for organizing that for me, Pete. Really appreciate that. I'll take that as a win. Guys, just a little video there. We tried to upload that. I have no, I lost count 50, 60 times through the week. It just was not happening. That little circle that goes around in our world, the buffering sign, just kept happening and happening. So clearly I'm not there. I'm back today, um, which is great to see you guys. Um, the biggest part I wanted to share today, as Pastor Lisa and Pastor Elton asked me to share, is re- really about the impact that you guys are having over in Zambia with House of Hope Africa. Um, you remember when Hope Sunday happened, it was preordained from God, obviously, with everything that happened there. I think you guys showed a little, uh, oh yeah, blah, 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 video last week, yep, blah, 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 um, last week. And it's so, so surreal when you're back on the ground over there and you're seeing the fruit of what's coming from God's house. And I'm going to make this really, really clear. I'll take money for House of Hope from anywhere. But there's something, right? But there's something about it coming from the house of the Lord. So I just want to honor you guys again for listening to God and saying, yes, we're going to do Hope Sunday because what's happened in, South, in, in Zambia now at House of Hope Africa is we were able to increase our assessment and intakes into 2024. We haven't been able to do that for some time because of the serious costs and the fluctuations of exchanges and all that kind of stuff. But 2024, we've got a number of kids coming through. That was because of those people who signed up to become monthly donors into 2024, that we can bank on those funds coming in. We're now able to do that. So honestly, praise God for you guys and what you've done there. We've also been able to increase our distributions of food. You saw Auntie Mary there and her son Elijah. We don't do child labor okay that's what happens over there they carried 25 kilos of maize back to their homes but that happened purely because of hope sunday this year so i just want to give you guys a round of applause for what you've done sewing into that it was a really really big month Um, i won't i won't lie it was a very heavy month a lot of stuff went down Um, a lot of stuff that was new for us uh, but we know that God is good, as you guys sung this morning, Pete, and led the worship this morning. There's a confidence in Jesus, amen? And so that's what we kept focusing on. So please keep praying, because there's a lot of, um, like when a grenade goes off, a cluster bomb, and sort of there's remnants everywhere. There's a lot of stuff that's come out of this last, last few months, especially the last month. So please continue to pray into House of Hope in our community, because the guys there are really doing so well. But man, there's a heaviness going on going into the year, you know. So I just want to encourage you guys, just thank you through, through thanks and gratitude. Keep praying for us. Keep praying for our teams and our community. Um, thank you very much for all of you who have been praying for little baby, baby miracle as well. Um, as the name suggests, he is a miracle, but things have not been great health-wise for a number of our children. So please keep praying. I'll keep updating you as the time goes through. Uh, we had an amazing time with, um, finally, after a number of years, launching officially our House of Hope Africa hub location in the compound in Mutundere, which was amazing. We had just, just shy of 300 people come along just to worship God and just give thanks for House of Hope family, including you guys. Amen. That happened as well. I don't know if you saw yesterday, we had 21 women graduate from our Legacy Women program as well. So that's just amazing there. And just a whole bunch of great things going on that would not be possible. Please hear my words and what Christine says as well. It would not be possible if we didn't stop for the one in front of us, but you didn't stop for the one in front of you, which is House of Hope Africa. So honestly, guys, God bless. It's great to be home. I might have a little kip in one of those comfy chairs right now. Bit of jet lag there, but honestly, God bless you guys. We're going to take a minute now just to catch up with all the people who are here. There you go. Oh, I didn't forget. And uh, God bless you guys in Jesus' name. Amen.
your comfy seat. I just want to stand here for a second and admire all of you in these beautiful comfy seats. We had the church that um, hires this building on Saturday night. We didn't tell them. We let them be surprised. Oh, kids, kids, kids church, you are excused have the best time. Those trees that are in the foyer, there's been a competition going on between Elton and Jess of which tree is better because the kids did the tree. So I'll leave it up to you guys to judge, but they're the uh, kids' church trees that they all painted themselves and they love it. They're proud of it. I, I think we should have a bit of a vote, but we'll do that a bit later. But anyway, that's the trees. Yeah, well done to all the kids. Um, so they came in last night and I got this message. It was like, wow, Lisa, like God is so good. Um, you guys have been so blessed, like generous hearts that have given out because this church gives out, gives out, gives out, gives out. And to just be blessed like this, that someone just goes, you know what, I just want to bless you guys and give you all of this. Like, it's just, you don't comprehend it, but that's God's blessing, right? When you don't even expect it, and then God's just there and goes. And Elton, I think Elton said it last week, but he actually did come to me ages before. And, you know, I just throw it into two hard baskets. That's just me. But he comes and he's like, I'm praying for chairs. And like, there's so many other things going on. Like, the chairs is not the biggest focus in my head. And he's like, I'm praying for chairs. I'm praying for new chairs. This wasn't even in the pipeline. Like, there wasn't even that thought going. The church that actually donated it to us that closed their doors wasn't even, at that time, even, that wasn't even thought of. So when he's praying for chairs, God's like, I already got you. I already got this. I already know um, what's going on. And so, yeah, this is amazing. So I just want to give thanks to God. I want you all to give thanks to God because you're all cozy and comfy in your chairs. Um, and Michael, Pastor Michael, uh, I did say to bring up what you were actually fundraising for. So they, House of Hope is fundraising for, what is the title of it? Renovation. Kitchen Renovation. Go on to House of Hope. I think it's five and a half. Is that what you're actually looking for? Go on to House of Hope. If you can, you can. If you can't, you can't. But go on, see what they're doing. Get involved in what they're doing. And it's so great to get updates with what everybody's doing and how everybody, there's just the generosity. It's like this. It's like goes and comes back. And like, you know, it's this give and take, it's this blessing, and it's amazing. So go on to the House Hope website and find out all about that. Christmas. I always seem to get up here and do a bunch of announcements before I actually start my message. But Christmas. It's the time where we get to, like Sky was saying, get to uh, everything that was happening in the worship and then everything that Pete said and then Sky said uh, is just everything that's wrapped up in this message. So we know that God's speaking to each one of us. We know that God's speaking to you this morning. And Christmas can be a really, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a time for joy, even though some people don't feel that. And it's a time to share hope, even though some people don't know how to take that hope on. But that's what this time is. It's a time of joy and hope. It's a time where we reflect on what we do have. It's a time we reflect on what we don't have. When we come to the end of the year, it's a time where we go, oh, what is it that's happened this year? What is it that I'm going into next year? Some people have anxiety going into the next year because it didn't look like what they thought. We have lost quite a few beautiful people this year. Um, and so that's been this year. So then we reflect on that. Then we go into next year going, oh, what's going to happen next year? 
So it can be quite difficult, but the, the, in everything, the reason for Christmas is God came down on earth, sent his son, but God came to be man on earth, a prophecy that was 700 years before, because he loved us so much and wanted to make a way, like what we've been singing about, to come back into relationship, to reconcile the world into relationship with him. We can make it so complicated. We can sit here and debate scripture. We can say what we think, which version we're reading. We can, we can sit here and we can preach forever on all different things and we can debate each other. But the, the, the hope of what Christmas is, is that God loved you so much, he wanted to reconcile relationship with you. He wanted to make a way and he wanted to give you hope. That's what, and that was prophesied 700 years before. It's as simple as that. He loves you that much that he wants relationship with you. No, Liz, we can all go home now. That's it. That's it. <laughs> no, no, no. That's it. We have, we have in our minds what Christmas can be. We have in our minds what the story of Christmas is, where it took place, how it looked in that manger, uh, how it looked with the, the shepherds or the wise men. We have our picture in our head. We have a picture of how Jesus looked in our head. I was brought up Catholic, so for me it was a blonde Jesus with blue eyes. As you go, as you learn about where he came from, completely different image to what was in my mind. So we have this expectation in our head of what Christmas looks like, of what it should look like, of what the Christmas story looks like, and there's all these expectations, but are they real? Are they true? Are our expectations us or are our expectations God? So I really wanted to go into uh, this scripture for today. Matthew 1, 18 to 25. Now, we can all know this scripture, but I want to see what God can bring out to us this morning that is a little bit inside this text rather than the whole of the Christmas story. Now, the birth of Jesus took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. And her husband Joseph, being a just man, and unwilling to put her to shame, resolved to divorce her quickly. But as he considered these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary as your wife, for that which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. For he will save his people from their sins, all this took place, all of this took place to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded. He took his wife, but knew her not until she had given birth to a son and called his name Jesus. Thank you, Father, for this word, God. Thank you, Lord, that we didn't need to do anything for you to love us that much, Father, that you sent your only son, God, for our sins to save this world, that we can be reconciled. You made a way for us to have relationship with you, and you keep making a way for us to have relationship with you. We thank you for Jesus. We thank you for everything you have done just because you have loved us. I thank you that this word goes out, and it's your word. It's not mine, Father. It's all you, God. And I just thank you for encountering hearts, transformation of hearts, Father. And thank you for meeting every single person where they're at now in the name of Jesus. Amen. So Joseph, this is where we're at. Joseph, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife. This comes from a supernatural dream. But this comes from a dream. Apparently, we dream three to five, sometimes seven times a night, which approximately takes up about two hours of us. We don't remember this. We don't remember our dreams. And I'm thankful we don't remember our dreams because I have daughters 
who will tell me their dreams bit by bit by bit by bit by bit by bit. And I have to actually say, I have to respond to these dreams. So if she, Taylor especially, remembered seven dreams, I'd be there all day. It would take longer than two hours. So I'm thankful we don't remember all the dreams. But that's apparently what we dream in the evenings, right? Well, at the night, whenever we're sleeping, right? It could be night shift. But whenever you're sleeping, that's approximately the time that we take to dream. So this was a dream, right? Where the angel came to Joseph and says, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife. How would you react to a dream like that? Right? You found out that she's pregnant. How would you react to a dream like that? Mary is pregnant. There are so many Christian songs regarding Mary. So there's a few of them. We have Mary's boy child. We have Breath of Heaven, which is called Mary's Song. The Virgin Mary had a baby. Mary, did you know? But did Joseph really know that his dream was real. So when his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. And her husband Joseph, being a just man and unwilling to put her to shame, resolved to divorce her quietly. Have you ever wondered, they're not married, why did he have to divorce her? So if any single one of us are engaged in this room, we don't actually have to issue a certificate of divorce. We can just, you know, we found out she's pregnant. Well, she was unfaithful. I'm just going to end the engagement, right? I don't know, but I wondered, right? So I don't know if many people know the Jewish culture of weddings, but I'm going to try and say these names, right? So there's three distinct parts. One is called Shaduka, which is a mutual commitment that the parents have chosen. So the girl is usually between 12 to 14, said Mary was about 13, 14, so it could be as young as 12 to 14, where the parents have arranged this marriage. The guy could be older, the parents arrange this marriage, they choose who, who is going to be together, and that's sort of the commitment that, okay, this is who's going to be together, and it's called Shaduka, right? The next is Kedushin, a Kedushin. Right? <laughs> I'm saying that right. I don't know. The the betrothed that's the betrothal where the groom pays the bride's price and there's a contract form. They're committed to each other now. There's a contract that's written up, right? And it's it's a binding contract. You cannot leave this engagement unless through immorality. Then you actually have to have a couple of people that are witnesses and you've got to write up your, your paperwork and then you've got to issue a certificate of divorce, right? This is through an engagement. Then up to 12 months, there's about a year in between that where they're planning everything. They don't really see each other. They're not intimate through that time. They don't really know each other really in these 12 months. And then it's called Nisuin, right? That's when the wedding takes place. So unlike today, we can get engaged, we can break it off. We do not have parents arranging our marriages for us. I don't know how that would work out. I mean, in all honesty, I don't know who does it better. If the parents would choose the... No, I'm looking over there with my daughter. But if the parents would choose it better or if we do a good job choosing it ourselves, I don't know. But back in the day, the parents were the ones that chose for their children. So... The engagement could not be broken, like we've said. So Joseph and Mary were engaged, most likely excited. They don't really see each other over the 12 months. Then he gets told she's pregnant. What happens in that moment? Because we can skip over this, right? Because we know what happens. We know why it happens. We know it's real that God is saying, hey, there's this immaculate conception in Mary, it's from the Holy Spirit, she's pregnant. We can read the Bible in everything and go, oh, like, why did you do that? Did you not see what was coming? No, they didn't. They didn't. So he really did not know. He just hears Mary's pregnant, right? So we just read over these texts and go, oh, because we know that the Savior of the world is coming. But he doesn't get that. He doesn't know. He just knows and she's now pregnant. So you imagine being engaged, getting excited, planning the wedding, doing all this sort of stuff, and then get told, ha, oh, she's pregnant. What do you do? Did she cheat? He knows he hasn't been with her. Who else is it? Who else is the, who is the father? How embarrassed is he when people find out? Is he angry that she's now making a fool of him? There's emotions involved, right? Because we are only seeing the outcome which we're grateful for, which we're thankful for in this season. 
But what led in these moments? What led there? And sometimes we can miss the moments when God's actually speaking to us because we know we have the saviour of the world. We know God's made a way, right? What do we do with that? What do we do with that? How do we, how do we, how do we live each day just because we know that? How do we make decisions if we don't actually comprehend the moments that led to this? How do we make those decisions, right? So he's either been made a fool of, he's embarrassed. I'm ashamed to admit this, but I used to watch Jerry Springer, right? And I don't know how many, how many people used to watch Jerry Springer, but I did. And it was a spectacle of a show. It was a terrible show. And it was people who felt like... Uh, so it's a couple, I don't know who's, who's the father, and it ends up being the mother's uncle's brother's twin, and it's all sorts of people that are the fathers, and it, DNA comes, you're not the father, you're the father, oh my gosh, it's my brother who's the father, and all this sort of stuff, right? And it's, it's people bringing each other on to basically shame people because I'm not the father, and I want to show you cheaters, so I'm going to shame you, right? It's, it was a terrible show, but... It was a show that actually you would look at these people going, oh my goodness, you were with her brother and then the sister and then the uncle and then it was just terrible, right? But it was a spectacle and it just made a mockery of people and it made fools out of people and it brought shame to people. That's what it did, right? Joseph has this opportunity right now. He has an opportunity to shame Mary because for all he knows, she's cheated on him, right? So he has this opportunity. Today... We have Facebook, right? So imagine Jerry Spring and Facebook joined together. It would be a disaster, right? But we have Facebook. And I found something on the internet that it says this was what it could look like if Mary and Joseph had Facebook. So we're going to watch it.
clever was that? 23 unfollowed. Sometimes we know it's God, but the people around us don't. Sometimes when you know God is speaking to you and other people think that's ridiculous, your friends, your family, but you know it's God, do you hold on to that? Or do you go with what family, friends, people around you say? So sometimes we know it's God and the people around us will not agree. The people around us will unfollow us, 23 unfollowed. Imagine how the Christmas story would have gone if Joseph went, I'm going to listen to all those 23 people that unfollowed me or how many other people that are not agreeing with me or my family or my friends. That's convenient. Yeah, sure. He's a tradesman. Imagine all the people around him. Yeah, sure. That's not true. As if you didn't. What would we do today? As we know, we know what those two are doing. Let's be honest, right? I'm going to stand up here and say that it doesn't happen. It happens. I wonder if those two, you know, before marriage, and then all of a sudden she becomes pregnant. As if. Do we believe it? And so what's he thinking? He's gone, she's pregnant. I don't know what to do. What do I believe? How many of us would question God? Is that God? Is that my feelings? Has God spoken to me? My feelings say otherwise. My upbringing say otherwise. The facts say otherwise. My traditions say otherwise. She's pregnant. And her husband, Joseph, being a just man and unwilling to put her to shame, resolved to divorce her quietly. So he comes to this conclusion. I don't want to shame her. I'm going to divorce her quietly. So it says he's, he was a just man, right? So he's to me, and about to you, to me, it sounds like this is out of compassion, right? I'm going to divorce her quietly. Because he knows there's a possibility she could get stoned to death with what she's done, right? So I'm going to divorce her quietly. And we would think, and he would think, that's the right thing to do, right? That's a just thing to do. He's being compassionate. He had three choices. To shame her, like a Jerry Springer show, and get her stoned to death could sound reasonable, she's been unfaithful, he was made a fool of, he was angry, and he wanted revenge, right? Easy, can bring shame to her. Give her notice of divorce or marry her straight away. If it was them that had did this, like some people had believed, but he knew it wasn't, right? He knew it wasn't. So then he chooses to put her to shame, I mean, to not put her to shame, to do the compassionate thing and divorce her quietly, thinking he's doing the right right thing. I wondered, right, this is just me wondering, and I've tried to research it, and there's, obviously there's no answer because it's not in the Word of God, but I wonder, why didn't God tell him first? Why didn't God tell him first so then by the time it happened, he was prepared, right? She goes away to Elizabeth for three months, right? So she's preparing or she's processing whatever, right? She knows that this was God, because she knows she hasn't been with any other man. So she's for certain that this is God. Why didn't he tell Joseph first? So then Joseph could process it, and by the time he finds out she's pregnant, he's already gone, I already know it's God, because God came to me in a dream. Why did God wait till he resolves this in his head and goes, okay, I'm going to do the right thing. I'm just going to not put her to shame, but I'm going to divorce her quietly. Why did God wait to that moment? I don't know, right? But I came up with something, right? <laughs> so, so anyway, this is what I'm thinking maybe, because and this is what I'm thinking maybe in our lives, this is why God just doesn't go, hey, I'm going to tell you what's going to happen tomorrow, so then you're prepared for it, and then you know. Because wouldn't we all love God to meet us in a dream and say, hey, this is what you're going to find out tomorrow. This is what's going to happen tomorrow. This is what you're going to go through tomorrow. So by the time you go through it, you're already prepared. Wouldn't we all love that? Right? We would. Right? Why doesn't that happen? Why does he come after? Anyway. So this is what I'm thinking, right? Because it says, But as he considered these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. As he considered these things, right? So he hadn't done it yet. 
He considered it. He was considering it. Another version, I think it's the Passion Translation says, he was debating whether he was going to do this, right? So he was already, this is what I'm going to do, but now I'm considering it, and he goes to sleep. Now, I'm wondering, so in Isaiah 55, 8 and 9, I think we have it on the screen. For my thoughts are higher, uh, not your thoughts, neither are my way, your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts, right? So this is where I came to. How do we get total dependency on God when we're always getting told what's next? When we get to a point where we make a decision and then God comes in and goes, hey, that's not the right choice. If we didn't make that decision to know that we're depending on God for what he's trying to say, then are we putting ourselves in the place of God? Because he's always telling us before we actually get there, right? So this is what I'm thinking. Joseph thinks, I'm going to do the right thing here. God waits till he resolves all that in his head while he's still in the middle of considering it. Then goes, no, it's not. It seems like the right thing, but this is my way. And my way's higher than your way. My thoughts are higher than your thoughts. Your thoughts and your ways are not my way. So I want you to get to your ways and your thoughts so then I can show you I'm higher. I can show you that I'm bigger. I can show you that I have all of it. Not just what you're thinking. That's what I'm thinking, right? I don't know, but that's what I'm thinking. Because Mary knew and Joseph didn't. So Joseph had to go with faith, right? He had to go with faith that when this child comes out, it's not going to look like me. I don't know. I'm just believing that it's God's. Could be somebody else's, but I'm going to believe it's God's. And I'm going to obey and I'm going to bring this child up and I'm going to teach this child and I'm going to do all of those things, right? He committed to what God said to him through faith because he had nothing else to go on. He did not know. That was pure just faith in what God had shown him in a dream. It was not by his feelings, but what God said. It was not by his circumstances, but what God said. It was not by the facts. How many of us can get caught up in facts? I can get caught up in facts because this is what it says, right? But it's not by facts. It's what God said. It's not by gossip. It's what God said. It doesn't matter all the people that are around you. What is God saying to you? And we've talked a lot of this year about coming to the table with Jesus on our own and secret place. And we've had guest speakers speaking about how to hear the voice of God for yourself. And and, um, Pastor Clint last week was talking about walking with God and getting to know God and the relationship with God. And that's what this year has really been, is about us knowing God for ourselves, as well as with each other, as well as with the community around the table. That's what this year has been. We can't know the voice of God without relationship. And the beauty of Christmas and what Christmas is and the joy of Christmas is he made a way for a relationship with you, right? So we can go, I I believe God, I believe in Jesus, and then do all this other stuff over here. And God's like, well, I don't even know you. But he made a way for a relationship. That's the, that's the, the all. He made a way for relationships. So how's your relationship with God? Are you hearing his voice? Are you hearing that? That when you think you're doing the right thing, and even though it was a compassionate answer to do, to divorce her quietly and not bring her to shame, it was still the wrong thing to do. It was still the wrong thing. So what's God's way that's higher in your life that you think that you know the facts, you think that you know the truth, you think that you know the answer, you think that you know the direction or you might not even know the direction, right? But you think you're going to make the decision tomorrow because we all make our decisions, right? We all get up and we make our decision what we're going to do today, what we're going to do tomorrow, what we're going to do the next day, what we're going to do at Christmas, how Christmas should look. And then expectations happen and they're not met. What do we do? What do we do? What is God's voice saying? What do we do? Elton's mum yesterday, two days ago, yesterday she went to South Africa, Friday morning. So things do not always happen the way you expect them to happen. What do you do, right? So Friday morning, I'm getting ready. I've got stuff I need to do for the day. My day's planned. That's what I'm doing. No, she calls me up, hysterical, my house is on fire. Oh, dear. (laughs) Drop everything and um, race over to the house. And I get there, she's not good, as you can imagine. She's shaken up, the whole range hood's come down, there's black everywhere, and, and so you're thinking it's out. And then I go over to the range hood and the whole roof's on fire. 
I'm like, oh my goodness, <laughs> have you called the fire brigade? No. So it went through the roof. Luckily, she had steel framing, but I didn't know she had steel framing. So I'm thinking, because then the girls, I run out of the house. The girls are like, what's going on, Taylor? I was like, Grace, house on fire. I don't know what's going on, <laughs> what the fire looks like. So they race over, and then I'm trying to get them out of the kitchen, because all I'm thinking is this roof is on fire, and this whole thing is going to collapse on top of us. That's what I'm thinking, right? Then all the sirens come, and there's how many trucks there? And she's leaving for South Africa the next day. Now, that's not what she expected, right? It's not what I expected because then I had to start calling insurance and getting people over and getting the... Um, it was actually, she thought very quickly, I have to say, Pete put a switch under her oven, right? Now, she's cooking oil. We all know you don't put oil, water on oil, but instinct just goes, I'm going to get... So she's, she runs outside, but she switches this off first. Thank goodness. Right? She switches this off first. She goes outside, grabs the hose. She starts hosing... The whole kitchen, there's this oil, <laughs> right? Fire's coming down from the rain shirt. I think it actually went through the glass uh, into the installation. Anyway, it was good you put the switch there. <laughs> Saved a life, I think. Um, wasn't what she expected. Then all the electricity had to go off. Everything had to go off. We had to call people in just through the day. And she's like, I don't want to go to South Africa anymore. It's like, no, it's probably the best thing that you can do because now I'm doing it and she can go. <laughs> so... <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, so now she's, she's gone, but it wasn't what she expected. But what God has done just in these last couple of days, and I, won't, I can't go into it, but what he's done is amazing. Nothing to do with the kitchen, but it was everything to do with the kitchen. But he can turn everything for good. When we're not expecting something and we think this is not good, he goes, just watch what I can do with the unexpected and what's not good, right? When your year hasn't gone the way you expected it to go. Mentioned earlier that we lost a lot of beautiful people this year, so the year hasn't expected it to go the way some people have expected it to go. What do you do with that? Might not be a loss like that, but it might be a breakdown in relationship, didn't get the job, promotion, qualification, boyfriend, girlfriend that you wanted, however that looks, what do you do with that? When life hasn't gone the way you expected it to go, maybe you saw yourself somewhere different at this time. It could be divorce, abuse, addictions, job loss, so many hurts, don't know direction, so many whys to so many questions that you're not answered. What do you do with that? Maybe it's church hurt. You weren't treated the way you were expected to be treated or you actually had expectations on church people that weren't met. Or your family hasn't loved you the way you expected to be loved or treated. Or what happens when it's actually God that hasn't kept to his end of the promise that you thought you had a timing on and that that hasn't met and now you're disappointed in God? What do you do with that? How do you process that? Do you quietly divorce do you quietly divorce and disconnect from church, from your family, from your friends, from your work, from God? So this Christmas, as you come to the end of this year and the beginning of 2024, I want to encourage you not just to know the, the story of the birth of Jesus and why, but the process of getting there. What happens in the unexpected, but God has it all, right? When something hasn't happened the way you thought it was going to happen, but God has it all, what is God's voice saying to you in amongst your life, in amongst your direction, in amongst your circumstances, that he says to you, not what you're doing. I don't want you to do what you're thinking you're doing. I want you to do what I'm saying, and it may look a little bit uncomfortable. It may look a little bit gritty and clunky. It may, not look, it may look a little bit unstable, but God, what are you saying? Because what you're saying is what I want. What you're saying is what I want to do, not even my good intention of what I was going to do. Because we all know the story of Saul and Paul. He actually thought he was doing the right thing. He didn't go around persecuting Christians that were speaking Jesus because he thought it was wrong. He thought it was right, but it was wrong. It was totally wrong, and he had to encounter Jesus to know what was right, right? So he thought he was right, but he was wrong. Joseph thought he was doing the right thing by not shaming her and quietly divorcing her, but it was wrong. So what is actually God saying that we think we know the answer and we think we're doing the right thing and we think it seems like the nice answer or we think it seems like the strong answer, but it's the wrong answer. And are you in relationship enough with God to actually know his voice to know what is the right and wrong answer? Are you in relationship with him to know that? So consider this Christmas, consider. So he considered, went to sleep, and he was met by the angel. That word is so huge. 
that I wanted to really point it out this morning. Consider. Consider what is God saying in your circumstance. Consider what God is saying in your direction. Consider what God's saying for your tomorrow. Consider. Do not go on your first reaction. We see in the world today, we see the wars going on. We see so many things going on. And we can blind ourselves from it, but it's everywhere, right? What happens with that? First reactions. I want to take revenge. I'm angry. This didn't happen. This isn't just. This isn't right. All of this stuff happens from our first reactions, right? First reaction, I'm going to divorce her quietly. But then consider, then God's word comes in. So I really want to just encourage you today, your first reaction, then consider, then what is God saying, right? Consider what is God saying about your life. Your first reaction isn't always the right reaction. The first reaction can sometimes be coming out of a really bitter place that God probably wants to show you something on the inside, right? And then you consider and then His voice comes in. But are you in relationship to hear that? And that's the main thing. That's the key. Are you in relationship to hear His voice? But as he considered these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. What does God say to you? (laughs) It wasn't what Joseph expected, but it was God. It might not be what you're expecting, but it's God. It might not look the way you think it's going to look, but it's God, right? It's him. It's not you. All of this, it said, all of this, all of this took place to fulfill the prophet. That was 700 years ago. So he tells us this son's going to be born 700 years ago, but he can't tell Joseph that Mary's pregnant a few months before. He's God, right? He's got it all in his timing. He knows why he's doing what he's doing, right? It's irrespective of feelings, of facts, of wants, of needs. What is God saying? And obedience isn't always easy. And sometimes the hardest thing to do is the right thing to do. But you don't choose the harder thing to do because you think it's the right thing to do. You choose what God says to you to do. Right? You don't choose the hard road because it seems hard, so it seems like God, because you hear that obedience is hard. No. What is God saying to do? This is where we keep coming back. The center of Christmas is Jesus. The center of your life should be Jesus. So every time you come back to that, what is Jesus saying to you, right? What is he saying to you? So it's not I'm choosing the hard road, but I'm choosing obedience, right? And it can be the hard road. The right thing to do can be the hard thing to do, if that's what God's saying to you. But what is God saying to you? So the angel said to Joseph, do not be afraid, which would indicate that he was afraid, right? So the greatest hurdle, disappointment, hardship that he had to go through, brought through the greatest deliverance that the world has ever saw. So how do you know that the greatest hurdle that you're going through right now that you just can't get past isn't the greatest breakthrough either for your life or that's going to be through generations. You don't know. But until you can make that decision of what God is saying in your circumstance, you can't see that breakthrough. You can't see that miracle. You can't see it because that was the greatest miracle through His biggest hurdle to have to get through. His biggest hurdle to actually have to have faith that this is what God said. Even though He didn't know, This is what God said. This is what I'm going to do. This is the obedience that I'm doing. This is the breakthrough and the miracle of the world forevermore to come. This is the way that was being made for us to have a relationship with God. And that was through that. So what is it in your life that you're going, what is that decision? What am I? And you know what? You might not even be in a decision making right now. But all of us go into a new year going, what does this new year hold? What does God say to you? Throw out your resolutions. And what is God saying to you for 2024? What is He saying to you for 2024? What is He saying to you for 2024? That could be the biggest breakthrough and it could be the biggest hurdle. What is He saying to you for 2024? Say it, my
as you all just standing, we're going to go through the rest of it. But I want to just say, as I am 9 6, I don't know, Caroline, if we have it. You guys can all stand. As I am 9 6. For to us, a child is born. To us, a son is given. And the government will be on his shoulders. We don't have to worry, guys. And the government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. That's for you. I'm going to say this again. For our, to us, a child is born. To us, a son is given. And the government shall be on his shoulders. The biggest thing you can do for people and for our governments and for our leaders and world whatevers, pray for them. Pray for them. There's no point in us talking about them. Let's pray for them. The people in your world, the people in your workplace, the people in your schools, the people, the bosses around you, pray for them. He holds it all. And the government shall be upon his shoulders and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, he counsels you guys, counsels, counsels you guys. He's inside of you, right? This is how you know the voice of God. Mighty God, everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. If you're struggling with peace, I feel right now, if you're struggling with peace, He's the Prince of Peace. He says He comes to give peace because He is peace. He comes to give peace not as the world knows it, but beyond our comprehension, beyond what we can understand because He is peace. So if you do not have peace today, grab a hold of Jesus because He's peace. He's your peace. And beyond what we can comprehend, He's your peace. So with all of your eyes closed, not know Jesus this morning and you go, you know what? I don't know his voice. I believe something to do with Christmas. I believe Jesus was born. I believe he died and raised like maybe or you think it, but you've never given your heart. If that's you this morning, just raise your hand because we're going to pray. We're going to do the exchange prayer together. So if that's you this morning and you go, you know what? I want to hear the voice of God. I want that forgiveness of sins that he came to save the whole world from their sins. If that's you this morning, you can either raise your hand, place your hand on your heart, but you're making a decision between you and God. This is not between me and you. This is between you and God that you're making this decision. You're making this vow that you're going, this is what I want to do this morning. I want to make that decision to give my heart to Jesus Christ. I want to make that decision to know His voice for me. I want to make that decision because how many of us are always so scared of making the wrong decision, right? We don't actually want to make decisions in our lives anymore because we think that it could be the wrong one. But when we know Christ, when we know Jesus, we can hold on to Him to know that He's giving us the answer for our lives that He already orchestrated. He knew this 700 years ago, he prophesies over here, right? 700 years ago. You think He doesn't know already what's going on with your life and what He already orchestrated you to be? So it may not be look like what you expected it to look like, but it sure looks like what He's expecting it to look like. When we stay in Him, we can make decisions outside of Him. But when we stay in Him and in His path, He knows the plans that He has for you. For all those who seek Him, to prosper for a future or for your good, for those who love Him and stay in Him. So do you know Him this morning? All your eyes are closed. If you don't know Him, place your hand on your heart, raise your hand. We're all going to say this prayer together. See the hand. God sees the hand. All right, let's say this together. Father God, today... I receive the life of Jesus in exchange for my life. I recognize my need for Jesus. I exchange my sin for your forgiveness. I exchange my fear for your love, my worry and anxiety for your peace, my sickness for your healing. I place my trust in you and confess you are my Lord and Saviour. Lord, this morning, no, in Jesus' name, amen. Lord, this morning, (laughs) yes, Lord, this morning, 
I pray that we hear your voice, God. I pray that we seek your direction, Father. I pray, God, that before we even make first reaction decisions or any decisions, Father, that we seek your face, God. I pray, God, that you make yourself real to every single person here this morning, Father, or every person watching, Father. Make yourself real, Father, to everybody, God. That we know, Jesus, that you are our Lord, that you are at the centre, Jesus, of every decision, of every action, of every word we speak, Father. May you guide us, God. You're a mighty Lord. You're our counsellor. And I thank you, God, that you reside in every single one of us. So I thank you, Lord, that we may step out with the faith and the boldness like Joseph to believe everything that you say, to know clearly who you are and what your voice says, Father. May, we, may you drown out every other voice that is in us, Father, and only have yours clear, only have your one that is clear with clarity in our minds right now. Every distraction and every voice that tries to get you away from the Word of God, I cancel out and command it to be gone now in the name of Jesus. I see so many distractions. I see robbing of peace. So right now, we put Jesus in that place. We put Jesus in that place of the peace that's been robbed. We put Jesus in that place of the distractions that try and come against us right now in the name of Jesus. In this season, Father, may you show us who you are. Not just the story of Jesus, but Jesus. Not just what we know, but the moments leading up, the faith, the obedience, the boldness in stepping out, the hearing your voice, the leaning on you, the dependency on you, to know that your ways are so much higher and bigger than ours and that your ways and thoughts are not ours. Thank you that we know that and may you show that to every single person here in the name of Jesus. Amen. All right. Well, we're going to sing. Uh, what are you singing? What are you singing? I reckon let's do it again. Because I reckon we sing let's do it again. Because it's not just because it's Christmas season. Because the thing is, we all come together at Christmas season and you see people seeing each other only at Christmas season. But that we may walk in this joy that we know that no matter what, God will continuously be faithful. God will never leave us, no matter even if we've walked away. So we're going to sing again to do it again. And for anybody who is waiting for God to do it again, sing this song as a promise that you know He is going to do it again. Because that's the promise of the world. Right? Jesus is the promise of the world. He's the hope of the world. We can't have hope without Jesus. We can willingly hope for something with an expectation of a disappointment because we've all lived a bit of life. But the only hope that can stand true forevermore is the hope of Jesus Christ. So we're going to sing, do it again. And if that's you that needs God to do something, you can come to the altar. We can pray for you. Or you can just come and spend time with God. But believe that He's going to do it again. Because see here, your promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness. Amen.
still on prayer this morning. We're just going to keep this time open for a bit. You make your way to the front. We'll have someone pray with you. If not, grab a coffee, have a chat with someone you haven't seen for a while.